Well, hello and welcome everyone, and thanks for joining us for 21st Century Medical Missions Live. My name is Patrick Coughlin. I'm Vice President of Partner Engagement for MBF, webcasting live from Charlotte, North Carolina, where it has finally stopped raining. And we'd like to welcome you to our discussion this evening about the changes that are going on in, in, in medical mission ministry. Today is November uh, 17th, 2020. It's our 21st edition of Medical Missions Live. And joining me as always from our global headquarters in Houston, Texas is Andy Mayo, the CEO of NBF. And our special guests tonight are Dr. John Crouch and Dr. Chris Place. Both are with In His Image Family Medicine Residency and they are both joining us from Tulsa, Oklahoma. John, Chris, Andy, welcome. Glad to have you all here with us tonight. Howdy. And that's an official greeting from Oklahoma, right? Howdy. <laughs> well, now that we know, you know where we are, we'd love to know where you are. So Andy, where do you think some of our guests are joining us from tonight? Well, tonight is an E-night. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure that First Presbyterian in Evanston, Illinois is on, Community Pres in Edison, Highland Pres in El Paso, First Pres in, of the Covenant in Erie, Pennsylvania, Eastminster in East Lansing. I got a double E there. Wow. And First United in El Cajon, California, from coast to coast. So wherever you are tonight, we'd like to know, is it Everett or Elkhart or Elmira? Drop your name and your location in the chat bubble or the comments section if you're joining us on Facebook Live. Well, before we get to our discussion, let me tell you a little bit about what your ministry looks like through MBF. If this is the first time joining us or you don't know much about MBF, I want you to think a bit about your church's local mission activities. Now, do you have a particular focus, maybe at-risk children or serving the homeless? Well, imagine your church focused on medical care. And as a part of that local ministry, you owned three or four major hospitals, a couple of nursing schools, 20 plus primary care clinics all around your state. Well, that is the scale of MBF partner ministries in developing countries. You see, MBF works with our global mission partner churches to equip them to develop long-term sustainable medical ministries. And in Africa today, over 50% of the medical care is provided by a faith-based organization. So this church-owned medical network is key to bringing both physical and spiritual healing to disadvantaged communities. And during our 57 plus years of ministry together, we've connected medical ministry in 32 different underserved countries with over 500 US churches and literally thousands of individuals here in the US who wanna partner with them. The bottom line is MBF's ministry is about bringing healing and hope to the hurting and the hopeless. And we'd like to thank you for uh, joining us and thank you for your mar uh, partnership. Martha joining us from Huntington Beach, California. We've got uh, uh, Mary Ann from the Texas Panhandle. And of course, uh, we have Jack joining us from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Coast to coast, we're glad that you're here uh, with us. So let's get to it. You're done hearing me talk for a while anyway. We have two really great guests and a lot to talk to them about. So Andy, why don't we go ahead and get the discussion going? Great, thanks Patrick. You know, in the last nine months, um, gosh, 10 months almost, uh, we've been focusing on the huge, huge changes that are occurring in missions as we move into, into the 21st century. Uh, we've talked with a number of people, a number of guests about how we historically approach medical missions and how things need to change. Also, uh, importantly, we focused on the enormous changes that are underway, changes from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases and critical elements that are gonna need to change in the future. You've heard us say that if it's the future is it's about both what we do is how we do it. So both of our guests tonight uh, are very well known and recognized international leaders. Uh, John is it a great, great, great friend, a great uh, friend to MBF, a great leader in medical missions. And uh, Chris, uh, both of them from In His Image um, with great international experience. So 
John, I'm just going to put it over to you first. Uh, start with a little bit of your background. Tell us about your personal background. Uh, you're the ED emeritus in, 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 his, in his image. So what's that over 30 years? <laughs> well, Andy, thanks, uh, thanks for having me, and uh, it's great to see you again. Uh, God bless you guys there. <clears throat> to talk a little bit about our background is that we started this family medicine program at the Oral Roberts University 40 years ago. And it's really been in his image program for 30 years. So it's a long time in the making. I just tell you my personal background is I, after finishing medical school at Washington University Med School in St. Louis, I ended up doing a rotating internship and was drafted right out of that at the end of it for the U.S. Army. So I did a two-year stint as a flight surgeon one year in Vietnam. And after finishing up my Army time, I ended up going to San Bernardino, California. At that time, it was one of the very first uh, 13 residency programs in the United States in family medicine. As you may know, back in 1970, about 1969-70, they changed over from general practice residencies to family medicine residencies. And so I ended up training and graduating uh, with the first class of family medicine residents basically in the United States. Uh, whenever I graduated from that, I ended up staying on there at uh, San Bernardino in California, doing practicing and teaching and being the associate director of family medicine, a residency program, as well as director of the emergency room. So I've had a lot of different backgrounds, uh, but as we did that in 1978, we really felt called to Tulsa, Oklahoma, because they were starting this new ORU School of Medicine. And uh, I went there in 1978 to start the family medicine department, family medicine residency. So we started the residency program officially in 1980, and uh, we ended up having our first graduates in 1983. So we really were kind of cruising along as the family practice department of the ORU School of Medicine. And then in 1989, the ORU School of Medicine closed, as many people from way back in that era remember. And we ended up moving the family medicine residency to Hillcrest Medical Center, which was a public domain nonprofit hospital. Well, the real challenge was how do you start to get a Christian family medicine program in a public domain hospital? And we struggled with that for about nine months and finally found out the answer was that we needed to create a religious 501c3 nonprofit corporation by which we run the residency program. And that's what In His Image became. So In His Image started in about 1990. We ended up getting our our IRS approval as a nonprofit in 1991. And when we did that, we had three charter goals in mind for that nonprofit. The first one of those was to continue to have a Christian family medicine residency program. The second was to support worldwide medical missions, particularly the graduates of our own program. And the third was to do something about healthcare for the underserved in our own, in our own community. So those things have gone on to con continue to be developed a great deal. Uh, one of the things we started to do was we began to develop very uh, kind of really high quality medical students who were interested in both Christian family medicine and also missions who started to be attracted to our program. And one of those is Dr. Chris Place, who you also got a chance to meet. So, so hey, Chris, I, now, I understand you spent 10 years in Macau so tell us about, I don't even know where that is on the map back here. Uh, tell us about that and how you got to hear, hear where you are from there. Sure. Yeah, and, and uh, it's just really good to be with you tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to share. And, uh, and Andy, good to see you again and, and excited to hear more. Um, yeah, I, I started with In His Image as a resident. You heard a little bit of the history uh, forgive me, Dr. Crouch, uh, ancient history, if you will. And, uh, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little fresher history, but not now, much. So now, wait a second. I sort of am remembering a lot of that. So <laughs> I resist. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, I was a resident in 1995 and, uh, which is a long time ago and, and trained at in his image. Uh, but before that I had, I had traveled during medical school to Macau. And while I was there doing a rotation, as medical students often do, uh, I met a physician there and, and I asked him, hey, I want to be a medical missionary. What would, 
what would you recommend? What would you say would be the way to do that? And he said, there's only one group that I'd recommend you train with. And they're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it's called In His Image. And, and he was a friend of John Crouch's. And, and that's where I heard about In His Image actually was, was when I was serving in Macau uh, during medical school. So uh, I trained in, in In His Image from 1995 to 1998. I, I stayed on as a teacher there for a few years. And then, as you said, we left in 2003 to go to Macau and were there uh, for, for about 10 years. Uh, what I did there was um, medicine. I saw patients, of course, and I also helped to start a small uh, Christian family medicine residency program. And I, I basically took what I had observed for three years at In His Image and, and recreated it in a, in a smaller uh, fashion in, there in Macau. And so I, I helped start that and, and it is still it is still going, praise the Lord for that. And uh, so that's how I, that's how I've gotten into, into what's going on. So that, that is sustaining itself. Yes. And, and much better uh, under much better direction now than when I was there for sure. <laughs> so that's now great. you have responsibility for a number of different programs around the world. Yes. And so really at that time, that was one of two uh, small programs that my, my best buddy who I trained with uh, started a, our second program in Almaty, Kazakhstan, and we were the two sort of pilot programs. Those have now grown to now 11 programs uh, in many of those in China, in the Middle East. Uh, some of those we won't share the specific location for security reasons, but all training uh, residents with the integration of Christian faith and with, with, um, with an effort to be salt and light in that community and really see it transformed um, with the gospel. And so that's, that's been the model. Um, my residency started it, but it's just been amazing to watch how God has, has expanded that across, across so many locations. Wow. 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 So John, tell us a little bit more. I mean, that's really more than I expected, but tell us a little bit more about how your program is unique. Sure. Um, our program is really as a one uniqueness, as you probably heard, was that we started in, it's wholly owned by a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. But aside from that, which was our mechanism to get into, involved in doing the training, is that we really have a, a real strong emphasis on spiritual integration for our residents. So we really say that we really want to have them come, really begin to be trained, but also in addition to, to really know how to integrate the spiritual dimension. And one of, the, one of the things we also have as a strong emphasis is the missions, medical missions, either domestic missions or overseas missions. So let me just mention a little bit more about the spiritual curriculum, if we will. And that is one of the things that we did, uh, we said if we were going to run a residency program that was decidedly Christian, we kind of went back to that old saw about what would Jesus do? You know, it's kind of like, how do you do that? So we thought, well, we really have to have a spiritual curriculum, just like we have a pediatric curriculum and an OB curriculum and an internal medicine curriculum. We need to have a spiritual curriculum. And so we began to put that together way, way back when and uh, really began to define it. When we really got to the definition of it, it was in about 20, 2005, 2006, we had a number of elements that were integrated into the program like Thursday morning or Thursday evening Bible study and things like devotions on rounds and so forth. But all of those elements we collected together in about 2006 or seven, as I recall, and we defined a spiritual curriculum and we had four strategic goals for that spiritual curriculum. One of those was personal spiritual growth of our residents during the course of the residency program, which was decidedly different from when I went through residency because they wanted to get that spiritual stuff out of me and let me just practice medicine. So personal spiritual growth was the first one. The second one was a review of the basic principles of the Christian faith. And one of the reasons that we did that was because we started getting people from all different denominations that came. We thought, how do we handle that? Well, let's just get it all right on the table and talk about it. And really the second reason for reviewing the basic principles, we started having people apply to our program who were brand new Christians, just became believers in medical school. So they hadn't gotten caught up with all the other people who had grown up as Christians and so forth. So that was number two, review the basic principle. Number three was, how do you really integrate your faith into the practice of medicine? What do you do in the way of re, uh, reaching your patients? How do you do your colleagues and all of those things? 
And of course, one of those has been Grace Prescriptions that uh, Walt Larimore and those guys have developed. And the fourth category that we do looked at was, how do you find God's call on your life? So when you look at that spiritual curriculum, there are about 20 elements involved in it, and it all directs themselves to those four different categories. One of the interesting things about our program is that when we graduate our residents, we also ordain them into the practice of Christian medicine. So that's kind of a unique thing. And I would say that we really have this the emphasis on medical missions, sort of both the domestic and the international. Uh, Chris is actually the head of our spiritual curriculum committee now, and he's also very much involved in our international programs that we do. So that's kind of getting uh, setting the plate for him to talk a little bit more. That's great. So do you give you, you now have scrubs that have a, a collar on them too? Is that what you? <laughs> Hadn't, hadn't thought about that, but maybe we should. <laughs> well, you said they are damn. So, uh, well, maybe you got something going there. Uh, well, Andy, we've actually had one of our residents who was ordained in the residency program went down to the Tulsa County Courthouse, registered his ordination, and has performed seven marriages since then. <laughs> hey, there you go. Me. Yeah, I'm not sure everybody would approve. <laughs> So, you know, we've talked a lot about how healthcare internationally is changing rapidly. I mean, you guys, you're, you know, all of these residencies, all of this teaching, you're right in the midst of that. So, especially for mission hospitals. So tell us what you've seen, tell us what you're thinking. What should our greatest priorities be? Chris, go ahead and take that. Yeah, so that's a great question. And that's probably the question, isn't it, in terms of, of where medical missions is going. And, and I think my experience um, working and living in, in Macau and trying to do medical missions on the ground uh, was very quickly realizing that there was only one of me and there was an infinite need. There was a need that I would never uh, meet. I would never be enough. I would never be able to do uh, as much patient care and see as many patients as would continue to come. And, and so very quickly, I understood uh, on the ground that we needed to be about training. We needed to be about equipping. We needed to be about enabling uh, local folks that we had discipled and that we had raised up that could do so much more than I could ever do. They, they were besides being you know worlds above where my language skills were their cultural understanding of of the folks that we were trying to serve was always going to be higher than mine and just the multiplication effect as we are all sort of familiar with so that became uh, really the way that we designed every residency program from the beginning and i think the way dr crouch has so well spelled out the elements and the other things the thing to, to bring out is that in every residency and even in our residency in Tulsa, the, the context of those pieces is in shared lives and it's in, and it's in a relational discipleship, mentoring kind of relationship between faculty and residents, between upper level residents and, and new residents coming in. And, and even though we have those, those pieces in, it's really what's caught um, rather than even what's taught. And so we, we came at it as medical education was the perceived need by our young doctors, but the real need was, was heart change and was, and was the gospel, was really bringing the gospel into that context. And so we use the medical education piece and we, we have that as our foundation, but we're really there to model and mentor and disciple these young people, enabling them then to do the work that, that they do so much better than us so many times. Wow, I'm so, I'm so glad we're recording this. Um, you know, you're talking about training it being both the medical component and the spiritual component. You're hitting one of our hot buttons and that is you can't separate the two. It's gotta be put together. Um, guys, that's really good. Um, well, is there anything that, you know, that you all see as strategic priorities or big things that you're working on on your horizon 
you know, now the next couple of years, uh, other than finding a cure for COVID, uh, you know, is what else is there that uh, uh, is coming down the pike with you all? Well, let me start with that and then Chris can finish up. And that is one of the things that we've been looking at is, is what we need to do to mobilize what he's talking about is this family medicine education as a means of doing medical missions. And we've, been, we've looked at that for some time. Uh, you may remember, uh, Andy, that way back in the late 80s, David Van Rieken wrote a little monograph called Missions and Ministry. And he talked about the stages of medical missions. And he said, first of all, it was the doing phase, the kind of Albert Schweitzer thing. And secondly, was the teaching phase. And then he said, what we really need to move on to is the enabling phase. And as you've heard Chris say, that's what we've looked at. How can we enable the, the young local nationals that are Christians and believers and medicine practitioners, how can we enable them to really reach their people and really uh, create that in a, in a big way? So there's a lot of pieces that have gone together with that, including from our, uh, our own pro program, we've ended up developing a sending agency because not every missions organization wanted to have our docs go over and be medical educators. They wanted them to do other things. So one of the residents came to me and said, I really can't find a, a, a sending agency that'll help me do medical education. His name was Chris Place. So he became our first sent missionary. But since that time, we've now ended up sending more and more. So we, we didn't wanna become a sending agency, but we did. And what we've done now is we have about 16 of our uh, graduates that are out there under our own sending agency. So that's been one big piece. In addition, as we started looking at these needs all around, we started hearing people from this place and that place and said, gee, we'd like to think about starting a family medicine residency that's a Christian program. So we ended up developing a consultation training program and we've con actually trained family practice educators from all over the US that have been interested in medical missions to go out and be consultants to look at initial starting up of programs and or ongoing evaluation of programs. Chris, what should I what should I add on to that or have you added on to that? Yeah, so I think I think you yeah, you've said you've said what what I what I would echo which is uh, we we start with residents as they come in and we 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 don't require, but we we strongly encourage them to have international experiences while they're with us, sort of in the in the milieu of of in his image and what's going on all the time. And we have in missionaries coming and going all the time. Uh, and then as they graduate, as they finish with us, often they're they're going into places where uh, we have a, a a program, let's say, a, a residency program, and they're serving there for a short time or or as John was saying, a uh, long term. Um, and then we come behind. Uh, both with the Sydney agency support as well as the consultations coming in and visiting and, and offering expertise in specific areas. Um, and so it's all sort of one, one big thing. I would say, in addition to those pieces, what I'm most excited about is when I see almost a, a meta narrative of that happening where, where we have actual networking and sharing between some of these programs and among some of these programs. And that's what I get excited about. So for example, our, our four Chinese programs, they're very, you know, they're obviously very similar. They share a culture and a language. They can, they can trade residents and, and faculty can travel uh, and, and, you know, do certain seminars and other things. And we can train, we can cross train and cross pollinate. We have meetings now like these, you know, where we have uh, directors from each program that come together and pray over, pray, pray for each other and, and hear each other's needs and how they can, how they can cooperate. And so for me, it's about, it's about all that we've been saying, but it's also about that network and, and the partnerships of working together as programs. And also of course us back here in Tulsa feeding into that. So that's the part I think that's been exciting for us to see. Well, that is so cool. Well, John and Chris, uh, we have a couple of questions coming in. I don't know that we're gonna have time to get to all of them, but uh, uh, let's start with this one. How about that? Um, uh, one of our audience members said that you talked about how IHI incorporates faith in the training of residents, but their question is, how does that translate from that training to the everyday practice of medicine? 
Sure. There's a really, that's a great question. And one of the things that we do, of course, is that we do kind of uh, role modeling for the residents as we go through the program and they'll see us, how we uh, talk with patients and so forth. But one of the other things that's, that's really important in that regard is, is really not just seeing the role modeling that takes place, but we have some training in that area. And uh, Walt Laramore has done a, a course that's called the Grace Prescriptions. And it is really how physicians can share their faith, how they can take a spiritual history, how they can share their faith to the patients and how they can raise spiritual flags or flags to sort of see what the Christian needs are and then respond to those. And really with us as family medicine, it takes place over a period of time because we have long-term relationship with our patients. Chris, what do you need to add to that? Yeah, no, I, I just would concur with that. And, and it's, in, it's in the small everyday interactions with residents. When they come and check a patient out to us, we, we, we often will ask them, you know, where is this patient spiritually? Did you talk with them about spiritual issues and needs? So it's, it's really on a day-to-day, everyday sort of sharing, sharing life basis. We, well, Patrick, we had one other question. I think I know the answer, that, but one of the other questions from uh, one of the uh, uh, attendees was, where do you get, what, what is your source of residence? And I think, I'm pretty sure I know that answer. We, you, we run across each other at all these conferences all the time, so, uh, but. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, so absolutely, that's correct, Andy. I mean, we, we, we recruit, uh, we're a little bit unusual, even though Tulsa is a beautiful and amazing city and a great vacation <laughs> spot. Garden that's spot. not the reason people come to In His Image, believe it or not. And so we, uh, we do recruit widely. We do all of the major Christian conferences, GMHC, you know, all of those, as well as the, the family medicine, you know, conferences. And we're there with a booth and we're talking to, to students. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big full-time job uh, to, to recruit and get these, get these special students. We would love to have people sort of pass the word along to medical students that you know, uh, in uh, programs of medical school programs that you know, because we're always looking for good quality residents that are believers that also want to integrate their faith and consider missions. That's great, absolutely. Cool. Well, I tell you what, this half hour has flown by. Uh, you guys have just been a real treat uh, to have on. Our special guest tonight have been Dr. Patrick, John Crouch. Yes, best, sir. The best ever yet. The best ever. <laughs> the best, <laughs> the best ever, ever. It was great. Uh, our special guests were Dr. John Crouch and Dr. Chris Place of In His Image Family Residency, uh, Family Medicine Residency in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Dr. Crouch, Dr. Place, I can't thank you enough for what you have done to raise the standard for international medical care, but what you've also done uh, and the impact that you've had here on family practice in the United States. It's just been absolutely incredible, and we really appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you. Well, our ne next webcast uh, for Medical Missions Live is Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. And Andy, what do we have in store for our next discussion? Um, we've got two very interesting ones coming up. Jim Ritchie will be talking to us from Kenya, uh, family practice medicine, uh, uh, physician uh, trying to organize a residency there or part of a residency. Um, and so we'll be talking to him right from Kenya. And then I hope the second Tuesday or the third Tuesday in December, we will have a live interview. I will be live. I hope I'm live uh, in uh, Malawi uh, with Jens and Eva Valen. Uh, he's the faculty for the surgical residency at Encoma. And I will be hopefully interviewing them in their home. So uh, you better tune in to see that one. We can't wait for those. Uh, and if you want to go back and watch tonight's uh, webcast again, or you want to share Dr. Crouch and Dr. Place's conversation with some friends of yours or your mission committee, or if you've missed one of our previous discussions on Medical Missions Live, you can uh, get caught up by going to medicalmission.org and click on the Missions Live tab and webcast archives. We post everything right there, medicalmission.org. Click on Missions Live and webcast archives. Well, friends, as you continue through the week, we at MBF ask that you keep this ministry of medical missions at the forefront of your mind. 
And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. First of all, pray daily. Your MBF team begins each day together in prayer on a Zoom call just like this one. And we ask that you join us in that daily practice by lifting up one of the many, many international organizations that are caring for the uh, sick and infirm. And secondly, if you want to make a lasting impact throughout the world by partnering with MBF to develop sustainable medical ministries, we ask that you consider a gift. You can go to medicalmission.org and click the Give tab at the top right-hand side. Now, every dollar that comes into MBF is multiplied by God five times. It becomes $5 of medical service to the least and the lost. This is truly an example of what Jesus referenced in Luke chapter 8 when he said, still other seed fell on good soil, and it came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. The impact of your gift to MBF will multiply many, many times over. So thank you in advance for your generosity. And we hope that you will join us next time for Medical Missions Live, Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. And don't forget to invite a friend as well. We thank you for joining us tonight from Erie to Eastvale and all around the world. And thanks for giving us the opportunity to serve alongside you in ministry. May the God of grace and peace go with you.